The one thing that we know for sure is that you cannot give what you do not have. Um, in this case, this is a photograph, and I love this photograph because this is uh, uh, our, our, our security uh, personnel from the Tampanese campus. Uh, and he always has an umbrella ready for any time it's raining because he says that, you know, if I have an umbrella, then I can help others. So I can give what I have and I cannot give what I don't have. As parents and as teachers, as educators, as an adult around students, it is really, really important for us to be able to have that sense of resilience because we are the ones who are going to model it. And it is really important, it's really essential. In fact, it's your responsibility as an adult to actually cultivate resilience through modeling. But what does resilience look like and what is it for us uh, to be resilient? So we're just gonna talk about stress. Now, in order to understand resilience, we need to understand and build an awareness around what is stress. And stress is not just big stress. It could be a minor stress, a small stress, it could, it could be a stress and strain in your body. Uh, for example, if you lift a heavy weight, it'll stress, it'll strain your muscle, right? Even that is a stress. If you press something very hard um, and that'll give it a stress, it could be as simple as a fruit, right? An orange, if you stress and strain, it will give you juice. So stress is something that ad adds load to your current state of being. So it could be anything. It could be a physical stress, a mental stress, an emotional stress, a social stress. Anything that adds load to your present state of being is stress. You lift something heavy, that is stress. You um, talk about someone passing away or the loss of, a, um, of an extended family member or a friend, or just uh, empathize with something happening far away, but something that is giving grief. That also causes stress. So stress can be small, it can be big, it can be anything. So I first want you to understand and build that awareness around what stress means and what can it be for you. Now, even as an observer, we end up taking some stress. So if you see news, if you see social media, and if you feel a sense of tightness um, in your body, it will mean that you're taking on some stress. So the first thing that we need to do in order to build resilience is to understand what does stress entail? I love this quote by Michelle Obama. It talks about grief and resilience going hand in hand. And grief itself is, is, is very distinct. It can be very different. And it can change as you grow. It can change as you change contexts. It can change as you um, uh, change situations. Grief could be sim something as simple as a child's ice cream falling right? An ice cream scoop. I think I, I still grieve when my ice cream falls. But uh, grief could be something as small as that, or it could be something big. But there is a reason why we have grief, and grief has a role to play in our development. Now, when we say no to a child, that child grieves for a while. But that no will build a file. And that is important for his or her retrieval as the child grows up. So grief has a place in the development and in the growth and the success. And we're going to talk a little bit more about how grief and resilience go hand in hand. So just to help you understand, right, we are talking about building an awareness of stress. So what happens when an experience happens? So an experience happens, it could be a news, it could be um, something that comes in front of you, it could be a situation that you have gone to. So it could be, for example, uh, you've gone to see a museum. So there's an experience. Um, you've traveled, that's an experience. So whenever an experience ha happens, the brain quickly looks for familiar patterns and it sees, hey, have I encountered the situation before or have I not encountered the situation before? If I have encountered that situation before, can my brain quickly retrieve some files to see what did I do at that time? How did I cope up with the situation? And then your brain kind of bifurcates into, ah, this is a good situation to have. It's a pleasure. That's okay. But in case your brain does not take it as a positive situation, then your brain looks for um, what to do next. So instinctively, it goes into a reaction mode, which is flight, fright, or freeze. So it can, oh my God, this is a new situation. So you freeze or, oh, 
I would rather run away from this. And it could be an aversion as well. I don't like this, right? So that's a flight, fight, or freeze mode. And that's a reaction. Or your prefrontal cortex part of the brain, it can just stem together and say, hang on, let me see what else can this experience bring to me? So it's a response mode of your brain with thought. So this is how you have all experiences. And I think that is something critical for us to understand that the experiences we have, it triggers something in our brain, which triggers the emotions and then it leads to action. So in order to understand stress, it's important that you understand that your brain is perceiving any experience, any situation, and then deciding what to do with it. Okay. And our intention, our, the human evolution of the brain, um, it, it's the best thing to have happened simply because our prefrontal cortex has developed over the years, over the generations, and it's given us a response mode in contrast to the react mode. And this is what we hope to have. We hope to have a response. We hope to have something which is well thought out and well planned before we respond to an experience. So what does it look like? And I want you to just have a bit of a reflection of the last stressful news that you heard. Okay, it could be anything. And you come to know that your body is under stress or you are under stress when some things uh, similar to these things happen. So I'm going to talk about the body, what happens to your body. I'm going to talk about what happens to your moods or emotions. And I'm going to talk about what happens to your language. So how do you identify that you have stress building up? If there's stress building up in your body, you will feel pain, okay? So that is the first trigger of stress, that something is getting stressed. And it is very, very evident, very obvious when you go to um, um, a gym, for example, or when you lift heavy weights, right? Your body experiences a pain. And that is a, a signal that there's something getting stressed. Knee pains could be a signal of stress. If you're feeling some kind of tightness in your uh, stomach, it could be stress. So it could be a headache, it could be a migraine. Um, some people react, some people have allergies, which is again a signal of your body, your physical body undergoing some kind of stress. So th these are signals of stress. Your language changes. So for some people, the language can become different. It could become more critical. Uh, some can become silent. Some can become more vocal. So if your normal language pattern changes, it is an indication of stress. Your tone could change. Um, I have a friend who says, oh my, I, I go all high pitchy when um, I'm stressed. So, so she talks about how her tone changes. She talks about how uh, when she's very stressed, she talks a bit squeaky. So your language changes, your words change, your semantics change because you're reacting okay, under stress. Finally, your mood changes. You're feeling low or you're feeling depressed or you're feeling fear or you're feeling anger. It could be a, 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 another emotion like um, shame, for example. It could be anything. So some of these emotions, they trigger a stress. They're not bad, but they trigger stress. So have a think about what does stress look like for you? And I would have uh, typically, we, we would have taken this, uh, taken some time here to actually identify what our tr stress triggers look like for us. Uh, but there's a lot of content I want to go through today. So what I'd like you to do is I would like you to think about it after this workshop. What does stress look like? What are some of the symptoms that look like? Um, so what does stress mean to you? How do you identify it? Uh, Sometimes tightening of our neck muscles, our shoulders, that is also a signal of stress, okay? So you need to have the awareness of what stress looks like and how does it manifest in you in order to build resilience, okay? The good news is that we have resilience as a muscle, so we can build it, okay? So you can actually work on building a resilience muscle to take over the stress. Now, in order for us to develop that resilience muscles, uh, muscle. It's important for us to understand that there is a stress, but it has to have a recovery. I'll again go back to the analogy of the gym, okay? When you go to the gym and you do a strong workout, or when you go out and jog, or when you do any kind of strong physical exercise, 
You want to come back. You want to just sit, relax, take a deep breath. You want to have good nourishment. You want to hydrate. You want to breathe so that your body recovers. The same is important for your mental well-being and the same is important for your social as well as emotional well-being. So when there is a stress situation, it's okay because it is going to help build your muscle. But you need that recovery. You need to be aware of what recovery means and what it looks like. Okay, so it is important for us to understand uh, the stress and the recovery. We always talk about uh, wearing your own oxygen mask first. So if you are feeling stressed, it is very likely that you are going to spread the sense of stress around you unless you wear your own oxygen mask. And that is important for you to understand that your well-being and your sense of self-care is paramount. Only when you wear your oxygen mask can you help others. So we talk about physical well-being, we talk about mental well-being, we talk about social as well as emotional well-being. And what does it look like? So the first thing that I want you to understand is that building a resilience muscle requires us to be physiologically, um, to, to physiologically recover from any kind of stress. And there you have to pay some attention to what are you consuming in terms of nourishment? Now, when I talk about nourishment, I talk about good food, I talk about um, healthy eating, but I also talk about consumption in terms of what you're listening, what you're watching, what you're reading, what is the digital content that you're consuming, whether it is talking about um, a WhatsApp message that has just come in, it is talking about news that has uh, just been seen, um, or any kind of a government advisory or my Bloom's message. I'm sorry, I do send some good messages as well, though. Uh, but just, just, just for you to understand that everything that you consume, it, it creates a sense of health or it creates a sense of dis-ease in you, right? So have a think about the nourishment. Are you well hydrated? And these are what we call somatic debts. Now, somatic debts are debts which your body goes in or it's a deficit. And if it's in a deficit, your body goes instantly in a stress mode. So if you're hungry, we, we often talk about being hangry, right? So when you're hungry, you get angry because your body is in a stress mode, it needs food. So watch out for your nourishment. Also watch out for sleep and rest. And this I find uh, quite funny because uh, I, I, I did have a friend who used to talk about, she used to be stressed about not getting enough sleep. And that was the cause of her stress. The doctors say I should be sleeping for eight hours uh, or it is said that we should be sleeping for eight hours. But... I don't get to sleep for eight hours. She was restful, so it was okay. So you don't necessarily need to sleep. You just need to ensure that you're in a restful state, okay? Exercise. And again, um, exercise looks different for everyone. What does it look like? Um, you can run, you can jog, you can do yoga, you can do Pilates, you can do Zumba, whatever works for you. But again, if you do not do it, your body gets into a bit of a stress mode because it's unable to release some of the hormones that are required for feeling happy and feeling joyful and feeling relaxed. So these are some of the somatic deaths or somatic deficits as we call them in order to nourish our physical bodies. So if you have a physical stress, some of these things, it is important for you to understand that these are the things that will help you relax. Uh, a massage, for example, is a very good way of uh, uh, looking at your body, your, your, your physical well-being as well, or um, exercise. So make sure that you have something and you identify it as well. This is um, something that um, I have made. So this is an acronym, the acronym that I use for myself, and I think it's a great resilience tool. And I want you to try it uh, wherever you're sitting and if you can do this. Our building of our resilience muscle needs us to have an I can attitude, okay? So this is something that you need to cultivate. So every time something happens and you say, oh my God, I can't deal with it. I need you to turn in your head, say, I can. I want you to try that. If you're sitting all by yourself and if you can do this, I need you to actually say, I can, okay? One, two, three, go. I can. So anytime a stress comes to you, what do you say? I can. 
And ICANN is an acronym. So let's break down what the acronym is. So I stands for identifying what skills and resources do I already have to manage this? Do you have anything in your competence personally or in the competence of the people around you or something that you can purchase? That is identifying, okay? So when a situation comes, for example, um, if something gets spoiled at home and then you instantly say, oh my God, what do I do? I can't do this. I can't live without this. Yes, you can. So the first thing you say in your head is, I can. Next thing you do is identify what skills, what competencies do the people around me have? Is there someone in your neighborhood? Is there someone in your WhatsApp group? Is there someone in your social group, in your family who can help you with that? If you have the competency, fabulous. If you don't have the competency, that's okay. You still have resources, right? So you have to identify the skills and resources you need to manage a situation. The next is can, see, consciously cultivating tools, skills and resources. So this is something that we need to invest our time in because we invest a lot of time in our physical bodies. We, we eat healthy, we talk about um, exercising, but we also need to understand that cultivating consciously these tools, skills and resources is important. Uh, a very famous saying, right? The more you sweat in uh, peace, the less you bleed in war. So resilience is a tool that you have to cultivate when things are going okay, because then it's easy to practice, okay? If you don't, then it's difficult to practice when you're actually under stress. Then um, you're in a you know, fight, flight, freeze mode sometimes. So you have to make sure that you give some time to consciously cultivate tools, skills, and resources. We will talk more about it in the next slide. A, I can, the A stands for action, and reflection. So act on the experience. Something has come your way, you have to do it. Instead of closing up, just go ahead, act on it, and then reflect on it. The reason for reflection is because you're building your metacognition, you're building your brain's capacity to understand if next time you come across the stress, okay? A very simple example. Uh, let's say you're trying and buying uh, a, a lot of groceries. So you're picking it up, you're moving from one place to the other. Take a moment to reflect on it. Could you have used a trolley? Simple things, right? But reflect on it. Just take a moment to reflect on it. What could you have done to make this experience better? So A is action and reflection. And finally, N for never giving up. Do not give up. Do not stop from acting. Okay, never give up. So you have to remember this acronym. And you have to say it anytime something comes your way, which you find stressful, say, I can and go for it. We, we talk about creating an ecosystem of well-being. So we're talking about that when we cultivate our resilience, we can help our children, our families and our extended um, uh, co-workers, friends. We can create that ecosystem by giving these tools, by sharing this understanding with others. So you create an overall sense of that ecosystem, which is really important because in isolation, you use more power. But when you have a community that's talking about resilience, when you have a community that is there to support, when you have a like-minded community, it creates an ecosystem of well-being. So, you know, your, your waves kind of spread far and wide. So these are the ripples that can spread out. Okay, we had talked about consciously cultivating our resilience uh, muscle, right? So we want to talk about some strategies that you can use. Uh, Mr. Matt, how much time do I have that I, so I can either run fully or? <laughs> Maybe five or 10 more minutes, I think. We said around about 30 minutes. Okay, all right. So uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to quickly take uh, five minutes. Um, I'm going to take firstly the easiest one, which is the posse of strength. This is something quite easy for you to do. Take three photographs or five photographs um, of people or places or things that energize you. And this is not a one-off energy. It is every time you think of that place, you smile. Every time, time you think of that person or that being, um, it could be someone spiritual you follow or uh, some religious uh, thing that gives you, um, uh, you know, a symbol or a religious uh, person or a religious um, uh, sense of um, a text. Whatever you think can give you that strength and energy. Take a photograph of it. 
and take a photograph and add it to your posse. So build a posse. So it, it could be like a photo collage of places, things, um, and people that give you energy and put it together. And you can wake up in the morning. I have created one for myself. I have it as a collage on my phone. I wake up in the morning and that is my background and I open it and I instantly see it. And it typically puts a smile on my face. And it's a good way of starting a day on a very positive note. The next one that I want to talk about is building an energizer list. So take your time, whenever you have the next 10 minutes after the workshop, perhaps, take your time and build a list of what energizes you. What are the things that you like to do? And you need to build that energy list um, now, not when you're stressed. You can't do that when you're stressed. So build that energizer list. Um, so for example, good food, chocolates, um, healthy, um, salads, or uh, from in my case, it's photography, zentangling. So make a list of, and I would recommend you to make a list of about 25 such things. The reason why I'm asking you to do 25 things is because then you stretch and you stretch and you stretch your imagination about what you like. And the more things that you like, the more positivity you can get, the better it is for your resilience muscle. Um, I'm going to try the Lotus of Gratitude very quickly with you. So I'm going to be uh, showing what I do, but I want you to try it. Now, most of you have your cameras off. Um, it's up to you. If you are sitting in a space where you can just sit for a moment and put your hands together like a flower bud, like a lotus bud. I'm going to list out my uh, reasons for being very grateful today. And you can list out your own. Uh, when we do this with children, sometimes after three, they can't think of anything. And it's okay, as long as you can try and open all 10. But I'm going to do this. And what we'd love for you to do is we would love for you to try it on your own about things that you're grateful for. Ready? Put your hands together, create a bud. I'm going to be very loud and I'm going to talk about how grateful I am that I have all of you today that I can share the message with. I'm very grateful for you. I'm grateful for the technology that is actually bringing me uh, closer to you. So in spite of my not being able to see you face to face, I'm extremely grateful for technology. I'm grateful for the Singapore government that has offered us the vaccine. I'm grateful to be living in such a beautiful place that has the ability um, to create systems around it. I'm very grateful for my team. I'm very grateful for Matt who's sitting here with me and is my partner in creativity. I'm grateful for my family who's here, who's given me all the grit, who's given me all the love, who's given me all the success to be here. I'm grateful for all the fresh air and I'm grateful for all the nature around me. I'm grateful for my students who bring a lot of joy to whatever I do. Every morning when I see their faces, I'm so grateful for them. I'm grateful for my health. The fact that I'm sitting here, I'm able to talk to you. I'm very, very grateful that I'm doing this. I'm grateful for all the resources that I have at my disposal. I have a computer to work with. I have all the things around me. I have good food. I have water. I have portable, clean water. Very grateful for that. And finally, I'm grateful for um, a beautiful big house. I'm grateful for uh, my house because it gives me shelter. It offers me a place to live. It offers me a place to be happy, safe. I'm very grateful for it. And I've opened up my flower. I've opened up my lotus of gratitude. And I just bring it to my heart and say, thank you. This is just one simple practice you can do um, and continue. Uh, I do have a superpower con contemplative practice, but I don't think we'll have time for that, uh, but maybe some other time. You could further do a journal. It could be breathing. It could be doodling or drawing. It could be photography. It could be playing. Play is the best stress buster. Um, that you can have. So again, decluttering our minds is very, very important. Finally, I would like to talk about how do you fill your cup? So every day you need energy to spend, right? Every day, um, uh, the, the black portion in this painting, it represents um, all the energy that is being seeped out, that is being uh, sucked out of the straw from you. But you need to make sure that you rejuvenate, you refill everything into that. So use your senses, see beautiful things, listen to good music, dance, have fun, um, speak good thoughts, uh, and everything, it just keeps adding to your beautiful cup. And finally, 
I want to talk about what we know it matters, our learning matters, but who we are matters more. And I love these two pictures. Uh, the, the one on the right, me soaking the uh, high schoolers. That is Matt's favorite photograph, and that's why I've put it up there. But it talks about when fun gets deep enough, it can heal the world. Uh, and the photo on the left is one I took in Bhutan, uh, which is meant to be the happiest country in the world. Um, and this child was just so happy selling goat cheese um, and was just happy and in the present moment uh, that it, it just drew people to him. And I think that is what we want to do. We want to stay in that positive frame of mind, which can be, um, which can talk about success, which can build success around us. With that, Matt, I'm going to finish off this presentation. Over to you.